Hey there everyone, it's Carpo here. You know sometimes there's a subject that I feel like I have to talk about, that I need to talk about, but I don't want to talk about. And that always happens on days when there's some grim issue going on or a subject that bothers me personally. And I got up this morning and my wife headed off to the store before she went to work. And she came back and she brought three black balloons she was carrying up in the yard. And I knew right away why. We talked about it before. March 6th is what they call Black Balloon Day. And it is a time to fly black balloons in honor of somebody that you know who has died from an overdose. Or in general, overdose awareness. And it was started by a family that lost their son, I believe, in 2015. Regardless of the reason, I believe there's another one in August. There are several overdose prevention and overdose awareness days. Yet, overdose continually has a stigma attached to it. And I'd really like to address that. In October, as a lot of you are aware, my wife and I uh, lost our niece who was her sister's daughter, of course. Um, she was 23 years old. She was from Tennessee. Well, she lived here with us until they moved out to Tennessee. And she had some rough times in her life. She came back over here to stay with us. She was living with us for a little while, then she was staying with her dad. But meantime, she had an addiction and her and her boyfriend had a problem. And as much as you try to give people love, you try to help them, people with that addiction tend to take advantage of those around them. And that is why there's a stigma attached to addiction, because of what it does to the people. But yet that ignores the fact that there's an underlying condition which creates this, regardless of whether it's self-inflicted or not. This morning, I went and looked on the Black Balloon website, and I read a couple of quotes that I wanted to run by you. I should say a couple of number comparisons. And I didn't make any notes for this except for a couple of screenshots I took. I was actually surprised to confirm what they had said. They said that overdose deaths, which I'm well aware of how many overdoses there are in this country, around 70,000 per year, majority of them opioids, that they, these exceed suicide rates as well as homicide rates and they also exceed car accident deaths. And I thought about this for a minute, and I said that's not too surprising, but when I actually did the research, it's not just that. There's actually more than homicides and suicides combined. So all the people dying from gunfire, stabbings, and everything else don't even begin to compare to the people who die silently from overdose. To give you an example here, the total deaths from homicide in 2018 were 15,498 compared to 70,000. 70,000 overdoses. In 2017 there were 47,173 recorded suicides. And that alone deserves its own video. Even saying the word suicide triggers YouTube's algorithms so they'll push this to the bottom. You can't talk about any of these things. You can't talk about overdoses or else, you know, people just don't want to hear it because it's an important issue that needs to be heard, but people don't want to hear it. So that means the 47,000 plus the others from the suicides and homicides come to 62,000, which still falls short of the 70,237 drug deaths from overdose. When it comes to mortality rates in cars, 39,404 in 2018, so about 40,000. There are about as many car accidents as they are, there are as suicides. And car accidents and suicides combined are barely more than overdose rates. So let's talk about this for, for a moment. What can we do and why should we do anything? A lot of people feel like if people are going to use drugs and ruin their own lives, then they get what they deserve. And I understand this mentality, but it's not helping and it's not helping our fellow man, our fellow community. It's <clears throat> the niece that we lost in late October. This is her. This is Sierra. 
This is her at the Grand Canyon a few years back. This is her, a picture I took of her at Beacon Rock with her and her boyfriend during a time when she was doing well. And I post these to remind people that these are human beings. Every human being deserves a chance. Every human being makes mistakes. Lord knows I had my own problems when I was young and I could have gone down any number of paths. I had my addictions and I actually was able to come out of a few of them saying, what was I thinking? You know, I made a mistake. But if I had died at 23, that was the year I met my wife. You know, we've been together for 21 years now. I mean, so much life has happened since then and I've done so many great things in my own life and experience so many great things without being a jerk to other people you know not every addict is going to be a lifelong addict and I was never a heroin addict fortunately but <laughs> what can we do and should we do anything is the point I was going to bring up this very simple thing that a lot of people are well aware of which is Narcan Narcan people have lobbied to make it available for anyone to get some of this, which is a simple nasal spray. You open the package, put your thumb in there, you push it up their nostril, and you can save a life. That simple. Unfortunately, the company that makes this, I believe they charge some ridiculous 60 or $70 a piece. And uh, there are, I believe, generics available. I'm not sure the specifics, but if, you're, if you know anybody in your family who is an addict, who is an opioid addict, you should definitely have a dose of that if you want to potentially save their life. And this would lead to the question some people might ask, which is, well, they made that decision, why should I save them? <laughs> if somebody was driving too fast on the road, or they were weaving in and out of traffic, or they took the wrong turn, they made a mistake or an illegal turn, and they got in a car accident, and they were suffering in their car, would you help them? Of course you would, because they're a human being, because you would see them and you would make every effort to help them. What if a person was about to get shot and you knew that person that was about to get shot had done something horrible, but you also knew that they had a right to live? You know, of course you would try to protect that person. What if you knew a person who was going to take their own life? Would you try to talk them down or say, well, you've made that choice, that's your choice? And if you compare suicide, to the idea of an overdose or a death or an addiction from death, uh, a death from addiction, rather, um, you can see some correlations there. It's a very similar thing. It's self-destructive behavior. People have to cope with a lot of shit in this world, and all I'm saying is give each other a break. You don't have to have a bleeding heart for every single person who dies of an overdose. You don't have to go out and save the world. But if you have anybody in your personal life that you know might be affected, please be aware and um, try to help them in any way you can because people do come out of it. Sometimes it takes a long time. There are huge networks from people who have lost somebody from an overdose. And when you think about all those deaths, you know, just think about how each one of those people probably has a handful of others who are affected in their own families and each one of those people affect their friend groups. Everyone is affected by these things. And I won't get into the issue of the Sackler family and OxyContin. I'm leaving that for a future video. And I'm really getting inspired to make it now. It's something I've been working on for a long time. And I really want to sit down with a microphone and get these thoughts down. Because, you know, during the time when I've been delaying, Fortunately, they've been exposed and they've been put through, you know, lawsuits and, and, and it's not just the Sackler family was my point. We can't blame one drug manufacturer. These, out, these addictions go back to the Civil War. We had an outbreak after the World War II. Um, opioids are a mixed bag, you know. It's like they are phenomenal when you need them. They are still some of the best painkillers on earth. Nature provided. But when they're abused, they can kill. And unfortunately, they 
one of the reasons people kill themselves is not because of the drug, but because of their unhappiness and their lack of community and support in their lives. So all we can do is try to give each other support. Thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully tell somebody else, you know. Talk to somebody who you know might have a problem with their family. If somebody has a child, you know, it shouldn't be a stigma to talk to people about these things. Be well, my friends. Thank <laughs> you.